Kia ora from New Zealand. Uh, my name is Arun Jacob and uh, I'm a licensed uh, immigration advisor of New Zealand. Uh, and I would like to start off by also introducing my co-panelists. Uh, present here today with us is R. Sridhar. Uh, uh, Sridhar is a former Indian first class cricketer and the current fielding coach of the Indian national cricket team. He played for Hyderabad cricket team from 1989 till 2001 before taking up cricket coaching in 2001. Apart from being the fielding coach of the Indian team, he is also the fielding coach of the Indian Premier League franchise Kings 11 Punjab. Uh, after finishing his playing career, Sridhar began his coaching in 2001. He completed a three level course for accreditation as a certified coach in 2007. From 2007 to 11, he coached Hyderabad under 19. And then he was eventually uh, appointed, uh, going to be the future fielding coach of uh, India. And the big turnaround we've seen in the fielding standards is largely attributed uh, to his presence. Uh, moving on, we have with us Catherine Elliott. Uh, Catherine uh, is a senior lecturer from Lincoln University. Uh, and she looks after the sports and recreation department. So Catherine joins us today from the city of Lincoln in uh, New Zealand. Uh, and also on our panel today, uh, we have Annie Go, who is the international uh, marketing manager and one of the senior most uh, promoters of New Zealand education and interest in India. So Annie is also joining us live from Lincoln. Uh, so that's our panel for today. Uh, so uh, we will start today's session uh, with a brief uh, hello from Sridhar and uh, he will speak about the emergence of sports and recreation management as a viable career option in today's India. All right, all yours, Sridhar. Good morning to uh, everyone in India and a very good evening to everyone uh, in New Zealand. And a big hello to all the panel members, Arun, Catherine, and Annie. Um, well, uh, what can I say now? Uh, first of all, I should congratulate New Zealand as a country to come out of this uh, challenging uh, situation with flying colors and you know the country seems to be back to normal big big congratulations on that and hopefully we as a country india should be back on tracks uh, very 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 soon and uh, i think going forward india is going to be a very 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 big market in terms of uh, sports and recreation because um, i always feel in every uh, adversity there lies an opportunity and uh, going forward, this is going to be really big because of the enjoyment and entertainment factors involved and also the life skills which uh, sport teaches is uh, second to none. And sports management and rec sports and recreation management is going to be big in India because, because of the number of uh, uh, leagues, private premier leagues coming up in our country uh, in various sports. The Indian Premier League, which is probably the fourth biggest uh, sporting event in the world calendar. It's, like, uh, it's third only to NBA and, uh, and the English Premier League. Uh, has now, what it has done is inspired a lot of other sports to start similar leagues because of the viewership in the country, because there's a television boom in our country, because of the sports channels promoting these uh, sporting leagues. So there is a huge opportunity here, I feel, for the, the, the sports management uh, students because there's going to be a huge role in the nation's development. I also feel there's going to be a lot of vacancies in event coordinators, sport administrators, sports marketing, sponsorship, player managers, agents, and various other fields involved uh, in, uh, in, in sporting events. So that I feel is going to be a big, big plus for all those who are going to be pursuing this uh, master's in sports management group as far as uh, the boys from India are concerned. And regarding recreation, obviously, in recreation is, is a thing which India is still not fully into. That is where, again, I feel there is a huge, huge scope for, for India because to start recreation is obviously it brings the communities together. And that is something which we will be looking at post uh, COVID-19 because, uh, again, that is something which is looking up really, really well. Thank you, Sridhar. That was a wonderful introduction. Uh, and I'll now hand it over to Annie. Uh, to do a quick introduction about Lincoln University.
thank you for tuning in. I just, uh, just going to give me one second. I will share uh, my screen. Okay. Just one second. Um, just so that it's not a full presentation. Don't worry. Just I thought it's a bit vis 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 um, visual stuff will be useful. So my name is Annie. Um, this is, um, hang on. So that's my contact details. I do have a colleague based in um, New Delhi. So in case you need to have any questions from, um, from a, who, a Supriya who is also our alumni. So you're very welcome to talk to her about lifestyle in um, as a ex students. Um, just a quick pointer about our location. Crisis is in the South Island of New Zealand. So for us, um, if you, keep, you could see that um, Crisis is in, middle, in the middle of um, the South Island and it is the gateway to the, um, to the South Island. And Lincoln University is about 20 minutes from the city centre. We started in, so you could see, they give you a little bit of idea about our temperature. Um, so currently we are today, it's 22 mm -hmm. degrees Celsius. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, it's that we are actually in our beautiful, really settled autumn time. Um, this morning, it started with three degrees Celsius and it, um, it's now probably about 18. So for students from India, for example, you will survive because we have quite a few students who are doing very, very well here. Um, if I can leave, so will you, because originally I was, um, I came from Malaysia about 20 years ago. <laughs> so if I can survive, so can our Indian students. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, this just to give you a little bit of an um, uh, idea about what our city looks like. A quick, very brief summary about Lincoln University is we are the oldest school of agriculture in um, New Zealand and we started in 1878. We are the only specialist um, land-based university in New Zealand, and we have the best staff to students ratio. Essentially one academic staff to 12 students. So this just to give you an idea our, uh, um, as our specialist nature, in terms of the ranking, we rank 356 in the world. Um, what you can see is our uh, um, how we started in 1878. Now we, um, we are a specialist university. We only offer some specialized programs. So we, um, for us in New Zealand, we only have eight universities and each of the universities have our own specializations. And so we don't try to be someone who we are not and we're focused on what the areas that we are really passionate about. So um, just to just before I can continue, um, our next intake for this year will be in July. Considering the current situation, we don't know whether but the border will open. However, for Catherine's program, the Master of Sports and Recreation Management, there is also a November intake. So in case we have to consider um, alternative um, start date, and or for example, if there's delay in processing time, then there is two more intakes for the year. Okay, so I just this is this is I'm just going to stop here for um I'm going to stop here in a minute. So this just to give you an idea about our faculties. We only have fa three faculties, which is Faculty of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce, and last but not least, our Faculty of Environment, Society and Design. So our philosophy is about you know. Um, live well. So we believe that um, having good uh, healthy lifestyle will help us to um, protect our future. So I'm going to hand it over to Catherine or Arun just uh, and stop here and we can answer other questions later, including scholarships. Absolutely. Thanks for that introduction, Annie, about Lincoln University. And now I will hand it over to Catherine Elliott, uh, who is Senior Lecturer and she will talk yeah. about her department and specifically about the Master of Sports and Recreation Management at Lincoln University. Great, thanks a lot. And um, thanks for inviting me on this chat. Um, good morning, everyone in India. Um, yeah, and good evening for those of us in New Zealand. It's, uh, I apologize, I keep drinking my um, classic New Zealand, uh, Australia, 
one of the one of the popular things here, the ginger beer. Bundaberg. <laughs> Bundaberg, yeah, it's actually just fancy <laughs> soda. I, I think I'm dehydrated because I just got back from a run. So, uh, as Annie said, the weather here is fantastic. Um, and just to give you a brief idea of what we do in um, sport and recreation management at Lincoln, we do have an undergraduate degree and it's quite common for people to transfer right into the master's degree. And there's, there's kind of two areas. So you can do what's called a top master's. So it's three courses over the course of three semesters. And, um, and then there's a research master's which uh, there's some three courses over two semesters, and then there's um, two, semest two semesters of research work. So if you're the kind of person, um, when you grew up, all the, the question you always asked your parents was why, they said, they said something and you'd say why, and you wanted to figure out, <laughs> get the answer, um, maybe you would consider a research master's, but if you want to upskill and get right back into the job, and, get a career in sport and recreation management, then you'd probably want to do the top masters. And so um, with the top masters, which is the master of sport and recreation management, like as um, Sridhar pointed out earlier was it's um, in India, you know, you've got the TV boom, there's big numbers, a lot of viewership. So there's money in sports but there's also a gap in the area of recreation. So that's anything outdoors, indoors, you know, rock, indoor rock climbing, anything that's recreation based and actually rock climbing is now in the Olympics. So um, looking at Lincoln in specific, in, in particular, what are the types of things that you can get at Lincoln that you can't get at other places is that we're really hands-on. So um, myself and my colleagues, we come from actually several, I'm originally from the US, lived in Switzerland. Um, and my colleague is from New Zealand. I have another colleague from Australia, uh, another one from Canada. So we're kind of spread in quite a few different countries. So we come with a a wide range of ideas. And when you when you come to our classes, you realize all oh, those different perspectives. But the other thing is we're quite linked in to uh, sport and recreation management industry. So for example, we have New Zealand cricket training right on campus. Um, and there's no other university in New Zealand that has a national body training right on their campus. So um, you can actually come see, for example, Sridhar's team <laughs> played in New Zealand. When was it? January, February? Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, we actually had them on our campus um, playing. So, and you get to see some of the athletes training. In fact, sometimes we do some research on some of the top athletes, which is quite a fun thing from the research perspective. And um, just filling those gaps in terms of the the degree side, but once you finish your degree, our goal is to try and get you a job in the area that matches your skill set. We don't necessarily want to try and find your weaknesses and make them into strengths and then show that you're this all around person. Um, we're actually more focused on finding your strengths and making them even better and putting you in a spot that makes you happy. <laughs> because at the end of the day, if you're in a job that fits who you are as a person, then that's gonna be the best for everyone, yourself included. And so um, as Annie pointed out, which I think is really key, is we have a one to 12 teacher to student ratio. So at the end of the day at Lincoln University, because our classes are so small, it's not that um, we just see a, a face, we know our students' names. And you know they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. But I would say that's that's actually just a small bit of it. It's not who you know, it's actually who knows you. So when yeah. Sridhar is looking to to hire someone, he mm -hmm. might email me personally because now I have him as a contact. He'll email me personally, and I'll send an email out to the people who I know have been asking me for jobs, and I know would be good at this in particular area because I've taught mm -hmm. the students. 
So one thing we see in particular with the students coming from India is they're bloody awesome. <laughs> they come to me, it's pretty cool because I, I arrange the internships for the undergraduate students and they'll come to, they'll knock on my door and come in and say, look, I want to work, I want to volunteer. And I said, okay, what, what makes you go? And they'll tell me a few things and I'll say, okay, I actually know some people who would be happy for you to work for them for free. <laughs> And next thing you know, they're like, I got a job, <laughs> just like that. And it's showing initiative and it's something that you don't see from all the other students. So that's one thing I've been quite happy working with the students that we've gotten so far from India because they're real go-getters and it's so easy to place them. And then people come to me and they're like, hey, do you have another student like that? <laughs> because we'd take two or three more. And um, you notice that students from different countries tend to get in supportive groups so when you come here you're not alone um i could name uh, there's three in particular students from india that just came went through the uh, master's program mm -hmm. and i've actually each year i've kind of connected them with each other so that they have a bit of a network um because it can be you know myself going to different countries it can be quite quite lonely you feel um you feel like you're the only one there, but at Lincoln, it's not. We really keep things small and it feels like a family, even with the staff um, working with students. Sometimes you forget that they're your students because <laughs> we're all adults. So we, we see each other in a professional way. Um, I guess I can just review a few job titles and then that would be it for me. So some of the jobs you might think, oh, what sport and rec recreation management jobs are out there. And one thing I would say is if you're looking to be like a, a personal trainer or you're looking to coach, you can definitely do those things, but that won't be the specialty. Um, at Lincoln, we actually train people to manage those types of people. So the management part is, you know, the students that finish at Lincoln are bossing around the people that <laughs> finish at other universities. Um, so community sports advisor, um recreation advisor sport management consultant we actually have um a gentleman who still works with us because um, he's graduated 20 years ago and he still works in christchurch uh, and he is a consultant people come to him and they say look we want to build a new facility but we want to know what the scope is what's going to be included and he goes out and talks to the people in the community and gets paid to consult with people Sports facility management, facility manager, sports program manager, a development officer, anyone who's planning anything. It could be parks, it could be outdoor recreation. Um, if you're into health promotion, that's where I kind of started, was into let's get more people more active more often. Community engagement, um, relationship manager, operations coordinator, events anything having to do with events every time you play a sport you're doing an event so how do you think that gets managed there's a, there's someone behind all that um, recreation coordinator high performance anything strength and conditioning manager um, park ranger field worker uh, researcher policy analyst you're looking at oh how do we you know with climate change in the winter olympics how are we going to manage that? As it turns out, not every country will be able to host the Winter Olympics when we have a climate that's warming. So how, do, how does that work? What are the policies around that? Um, you see a bunch of policies changing right now with COVID. So, I mean, we're becoming an adaptive um, policy, you know, across all the countries we're having to adapt. So, and we see now how quickly that can happen. Um, research, like I mentioned earlier, um, let's see, some of the other key, oh, educator, outdoor instructor, sports instructor, um, school sports, we have a lot of students getting jobs going into running the school sports programs, that's quite a popular one, conference management, um, project management, risk assessment, communications officer, tourism, Recreation guide, marketing and promotions are really popular. Uh, and those would probably be the head one, the, like the top, top 
type of jobs that we would advise you to get with a master in sport and rec management. And that's, I think that's all for me for now. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Catherine, for that. And before we move on, I'd also like to invite Mary Joseph, my colleague, uh, and also fellow licensed immigration advisor. She's also joined us from uh, Hamilton. Uh, she's here to back me up just in case I run out of breath. Uh, but we have had a few questions coming in. Uh, we have about seven questions that have come in from the attendees. Uh, for all of you who are attending and you want to ask us a question, please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and, you know, and we will try and answer them to the best of our abilities. All right. So question number one is from uh, Arvias Jana saying, can I know whether New Zealand is studying something like a, a league or IPL in cricket? <laughs> Who would like to take that? Well, um, uh, yeah, maybe I, Sridhar I, would have New Zealand, some. New Zealand already runs a Premier T20 uh, tournament based on which they, they select their, uh, their T20 team. I um, mean, it is, it is city-based though. It is mostly city-based rather than being a franchise-based model. And that is run by the New Zealand um, Cricket Association, I mean, New Zealand Cricket. So yeah, they do have a premier D20 tournament, obviously not at the scale of an IPA. Correct, it's called the Super Smash. Yes. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, there is another question and this is from Meher Upadhyay who asks, uh, this is to Sridhar, he says, what difference do you see between the sporting organizations in India and in New Zealand in terms of the management and professional setup and what are the key learnings India can take? Well, look, whenever uh, we as a team, whether as an Indian team, we tour New Zealand, we totally, we totally bowled over by the, the, the way that they are organized. You know? um, that, is, that is a difference of culture, I would suppose. In New Zealand, everything is organized, everything is done by very little people. The same mm -hmm. job which which uh, six people or eight people do in India is done by one person in New Zealand, and is done it uh, as efficiently, if not better, than what six people would do would do it in our country. So that is something which, for us as a country or a sport as a sporting or a sporting country, is a big takeaway as how to be more efficient in what you do in the same time. That is something I think courses like these would really, really help uh, the Indian students to learn. Obviously, there is more more bang for the buck type. So that is a, my biggest takeaway while I've been traveling to New Zealand in the last five years. Thanks, Sridhar. Catherine, you had a very annoying smile on your face when Sridhar started answering. Would you like to add anything more? And we have quite a few other questions. We'll go on to next. Yeah, um, I would just say one of the things that strikes me in New Zealand, coming from the US and, and living in Switzerland, getting that European perspective, I would say Kiwis have a really good work-life balance. And I think that's why they can be so efficient because when they're in work, they're full on getting work done. And when they're in play, they play hard as well. So um, a lot of people here who are in sport and recreation management are also playing or quite active people as well. So I feel like in New Zealand, um, now I'm not certain of what the situation is exactly like in India, but from what I've kind of gathered from um, some of my students, it's been more like a lot of sponsorship, a lot of marketing, a lot of television, press, media, where in New Zealand, it's, it's more volunteer run on some of the smaller scale things. There is, there are, you know, obviously the, the popular sports, which have the marketing as well, but um, in terms of how things are run, it's really, what they say here, which is one of my favorite phrases is, it operates on the smell of an oily rag. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, they just, they make do with little because it's a small, you know, only 5 million people here. Um, but at the same time, they don't have the sponsorship. It's not all hyped up. Like in the US, everything's got a logo and a, a Nike swoosh. And, and here they just figure it out. They might sell cheese, cheese rolls to make some money you know there's a lot of fundraising and things like that by the players themselves not at the professional level but at the at the smaller levels so people just make it happen in their own small communities whereas probably like in the u.s and and possibly in, in india it's a bit larger scale all right thanks catherine next question is to you i guess it's from dan manohar and he asks is are there any papers in sports law in this particular course 
So not in this particular course. I think there is a law paper in the commerce um, department. So um, within the taught masters, you can take two courses that are pretty much across any part of the university and you could take a law paper. So it wouldn't be sports law in particular, but yes, you could take a law paper. Fantastic. Next question. Where are the current alumni placed globally from this course? So the alumni, this, this course is all six or seven years old, the masters. So it's not extremely old. And the original people who started attending it were mostly from New Zealand. So many of them still live in New Zealand. Now, since last, about a year and a half, we had our first students coming from China and India. And so those are, we'll just be finishing this semester. So um, we haven't seen where they're placed, but the ones I've talked to are planning to move back to India and get jobs there. But some of them, it'll be hard because actually some of them are quite desirable here. So some of them might stay. <laughs> All right, yeah. And just while on that, Mary, would you like to add quickly what would be the sort of uh, post-study opportunities that uh, students might have after they complete the master's uh, program in sports and recreation management? Right, so um, as per the immigration policy, you are allowed a three-year post-study work visa after completion of your master's. So like uh, um, Catherine just mentioned, the long list of jobs you could possibly look for. If you do a course in sports and management, I think most of you would come with an idea saying, okay, I'm going to work as a, a sports team manager, and that's it. That's, that's what you have an idea of what kind of jobs you would get. But Catherine did explain at length that there's so many opportunities in so many different areas that you could look at. You could be working as a, phys a physical education, uh, you know, um, a person managing that in schools as well. E even at that level, you could work. So there are a lot of opportunities hidden in a lot of places. And it's important. Uh, and the three-year post-study work visa will give you enough time to explore and understand. So if uh, the school uh, will also help you understand where your career is, can go into uh, based on your uh, learning, based on your background. And uh, obviously, licensed advisors like us can also help you understand what kind of careers you can get in New Zealand. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Uh, next question, uh, Catherine, uh, is from a gentleman called Krishna Singh says, I'm 34, year, 34 years old and I've already completed my master's of physical education from India. Uh, how can I benefit from this course? Well, this course is going to give you more of an idea of how the management aspect works in a broader range of the sport and rec sector. So you could even take a class where you're learning about outdoor recreation, um, which you may have a small bit within physical education, but I'm not sure how much um, you could learn quite a bit about the social aspect of sport. So um, one of the key courses is, uh, one, yeah, one of the courses is really looking at how humans interact with sport as a society. Mm -hmm. So some of the some of the undertones, for example, um, there was a big game, uh, it was a rugby match a few years ago in Australia, and during the halftime they had a musician, um, what's his name, but he he had a song, and it was basically about um, it's called same love about homosexuality and at that time it was it was really well placed because they were just about to vote and the parties were split and one of them was for and one was against and so looking at how how a sports game can actually impact the um, politics based on you know having a, a singer who's singing this song and and could potentially sway uh, a vote <laughs> And so looking at in society, how, how sports can actually play a role and even bring cultures together. You know, you look at, you look at um, the Olympics and how much countries come together or maybe in certain cases um, go apart, <laughs> but how, how sports plays a role in that. So that would probably want be one of the biggest things that you may not have gotten in um, physical education class. Thanks, Catherine. Next question is from Dr. Shashank, and he asks, 
what is the level of this program? Is it a two-year program, uh, Catherine? Yes, it is actually a year and a half. So it's three semesters and each year, are, you know, there's two semesters there. You could do a summer semester. And so then the whole program would be done in one year, but typically it's taking um, 18 months. So yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks, and, Catherine. And, and, also and to just, master's level. Yeah. yeah. And talking about the level, Shishak, I can add that it is a level nine in New Zealand. We have from level levels one to 10, 10 being PhD. So this is level nine, which is just one step below the master's. The other advantage of doing a level nine is that you would also be able to get a spouse work visa if you're married. And if you want to get, you know, come with your family, your uh, you know, partner or spouse can get a work visa full time no conditions, and your children would also get uh, the benefit of being, uh, you know, uh, present uh, in New Zealand as domestic students. All right, next question to Annie. Uh, what are the types of scholarships uh, for this particular course, Annie? This is from Naveen Marga. Hi, just, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Now, after sharing the screen, just to, on the content of, um, what uh, the Master of Recreation, Sports and Recreation Management um, content details so that you can have an understanding. This is a combination of um, what kind of options you can have. The, as um, Catherine have explained, this is a three semester um, top, uh, coursework masters. So it doesn't have an intense um, research um, dissertation. So it's more for professional development and has quite a comp um, kind of preparation for your, um, um, I suppose, future career. So the whole three semester, the tuition fees, it's 42,750 in total for the 180 credits. So if you start in July or February, normally you, it will take you one and a half years. And so you will have November, December, and January for free. You will, that's it, it will be your summer break. You will go and play cricket, <laughs> go and um, follow the, um, um, go and do work and travel around. If you do come in November, you can start in November, but it will be a fast track option. So you will be studying from November to the end of Feb, um, um, January. Um, without, um, while the other group of students are, are having their holidays. But they are advantageous because normally that's where the cricket team come and tour in New Zealand. And often you get to see quite a lot of famous cricket players on our campus in January. So, and as for the scholarship, we have a 10,000, we have a 10,000 merit scholarships. That is what we call 180 credit um, top master merit scholarship. The criteria is in your final year of your bachelor degree, if you have achieved B plus average, then you will automatically get awarded. You don't have to put in a separate application. So what it means is if you did get award, um, did get a scholarship, it will become 32,750 in total for the whole program. So it's a very good, um, um, good outcome. I just want to mention that if um, we can, I could ask um, Catherine to talk about the type of background, um, who can study um, this um, top, master merit, uh, top master programs, because um, it's not just for students who come from a, a sports background. Um, so Catherine, could you just explain that a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's a great question or a great point that should be clarified. Um, we have had we have had a student um, actually Sarang is his name. He came in. He came from an engineering background and decided he was ready to get into sports and sport management. Um, so what we do is well, what he did for his application. He submitted his his transcript from his undergraduate and and usually what I do is I look through and I see if there's any kind of management type course any psychology, any um, social science where, where students learn about how to work with people. And in his case, it was just all engineering. So there wasn't much of that. So what he did was he applied for, and you might even see it on this page on the side. Um, yeah, he applied for the graduate diploma 
in recreation management. And that led him to a pathway into the Master for Sport and Recreation Management. So you can come from a non-sports background um, and apply for this kind of, um, it's kind of a, a bridge into the master. So you'll do uh, this particular, what is it? Is it three? Isn't it three? Yeah. And so, um, so the graduate diploma in recreation management in Sarang's case, he um, because he came from engineering, so he did um five three hundred level courses from our Bachelor of Sports and Recreation Management, and that gave that gave him the foundation. He had the option to go and work uh, under the post study work, right? Um, to great to finish his study, go for work and come back. But he decided he chose to continue for further studies. So now he's in his master of sports and um, recre um, recreation management. I think he's originally from Mumbai, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so he um, he did some of the um, in um, kind of projects and delivery some sports events last year, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so, but I just want to mention for those students who come from a technical like engineering background, you don't have to necessarily need to do the master's. The one year graduate diploma in recreation management itself will give you some good um, applied skills that allows you to have some good knowledge. And then you can decide whether you want to continue to do master's or you want to have some couple of years of work experience before you come back to do the master's studies. And, and on that note, I'm going to hand it over to Mary to explain the post-study work rights for graduate diploma. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will, uh, yeah. I will bring Mary in a little later. Next yeah. question yeah. is uh, yeah. uh, to Sridhar. It says, uh, does India really need professional sports managers, sir? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. India needs a lots and lots of professional sports managers at this point of time. Because like I said earlier, like I said earlier on the on, on, on the program and uh, Catherine agreed to it, there is a massive mm. sports boom because of the way in which television is aggressively promoting sports in India at present. So I think every single sport, like for instance, the the Kabaddi, the Kabaddi League. The Kabaddi Premier League is a huge hit in India. I mean, they the right tries a year. There are 12, 14, 16 yes. teams going, and uh, the number of teams are increasing, and all the teams are privately owned by franchisees. So they need every team needs two, three, or four sports uh, managers for different uh, uh, areas on board. Similarly, there's IPL, there's Premier Badminton League, there's the Premier Hockey League. And, you know, so many golf tournaments going on around. So, I mean, there is so much happening in Indian sports field that and it's getting very, very professional now. It's not like in the earlier days where you run it in a very amateur way. And everything is being run in a very professional way with the kind of money that's being pumped in. So, I think there is a massive need of uh, sports uh, managers in India. All right. Okay, next question to Catherine here. And it's like, I'm presently working as a head of department of uh, sports and physical education in an institutions, uh, how will this uh, course help for my future career? Well, I'm sorry, but was the... So the question the... is, I'm already working as a head of department uh, uh, okay. in sports and physical education in uh, an physical, institution. Okay. How will this course be helpful for my career? Well, I would say it depends where you, what your plans are. Um, if you're planning on moving up, you know, there's there's upward, if there's a kind of a, in the US we have uh, sports administrators, uh, athletic department, athletic directors. So if you're planning on kind of moving up, there's that opportunity, or if you're looking to kind of move across into another type of career, then that would help. But um, typically, uh, if you're just looking at staying in your same job, it's going to extremely upskill you and give you kind of the current the current knowledge which you may have not have learned a few years ago because things have changed quite a bit even when I did my sport management degree to today it's quite a bit different excellent hey uh, any next question is to you do you have distance education for this course in sports management and recreation good question um 
right now in in at this moment we are um some of our students are actually not in Christchurch because of the um situation so we have been providing the study through um what we call distance learning mode um so there might be in the future where we we will we looking at delivering programs like this um in a full capacity at um through distance learning the only challenges is um, we may not be eligible for the um, post study work rights. That will be the um, challenge. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, although I might, if I may add, uh, I think yeah. uh, the government of New Zealand uh, is uh, probably going to actively look at an option where even if part of the course is uh, delivered online, I'm sure they'll take it into consideration for post study work visa uh, considerations. So. Uh, let's keep our yeah. fingers crossed on that one, and we are all waiting and watching on that one. Mary, here's an extra question to you. Uh, what are the kind of uh, careers that we can get, uh, uh, and what is the kind of salaries after five years of experience in this area? Right. So um, there is New Zealand has this popular website which is called Careers, which is a government-owned uh, and run website which talks about careers in this area. So there are about five or six careers they have listed as under this. Uh, however, the most uh, relevant one I could see here is a recreation coordinator. So the job opportunities that is listed as under the recreation uh, sector, uh, recreation management sector, they say it's good. Uh, the starting salaries for a senior recreation coordinator is between $39,000 to $57,000 a year. And someone with experience uh, who can start with uh, $40K upwards to about $83,000 uh, per annum. This is what the careers website, which is a government website, which uh, uh, suggests what the job opportunities and also the salaries uh, for this area. All right, uh, just going back to the question that uh, uh, Annie asked here some time ago about what is the post-study work visa scenario if one opts to do a graduate diploma in sports and recreation management? Well, yeah, the graduate diploma is a level seven program. And because this program is uh, offered by Lincoln University based in, out of Auckland, if you are graduating before December 2021, then you will be eligible for a two-year post-study work visa. However, if you start the course, uh, say January, even if you start in January 2021, you will be eligible for the post-study work visa uh, uh, for two years. After that, anybody who enrolls will be eligible only for the one-year post-study work visa. However, the masters will give you a three years for study work visa yeah fantastic uh okay this one's to catherine uh does this course curriculum cover particular sports or it's only a general management uh, course there are no particular sports covered in terms of you know taking a course in basketball or field hockey or anything like that it's um within the lectures, obviously the examples, and just about every sport will be brought up at some point. Um, and we each have our own, uh, the people who teach each have their own sports that they played. So sometimes the examples, if you take a course um, from Mike Hamlin, who teaches more of the physical activity and health course, you'll probably get quite a few rugby examples. If you take it from me, it'll be mostly cycling and basketball and Rosalind is doing gymnastics. <laughs> so we all have a, a different kind of sports background, but no, there aren't particular sports that are taught um, per se as kind of individual kind of physical education courses. That's not part of it. All right, excellent. Next question is just there and this is, uh... You're already a very well-established sports professional at the international level and probably one of the most visible faces uh, along with the Indian cricket team. Uh, would someone like yourself with your experience still consider taking up a course like this? Well, if I have the time, <laughs> and if I, if I could come and live in New Zealand, I surely would consider you. We can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and, and in what ways do you think this might upskill you Sridhar as somebody who's already a seasoned professional uh, in the in the arena of sports? I think look, may, maybe not in the current job which I am, but if I look to move uh, ahead after this job and if I'm looking to do something um, private, you know, setting up, setting up a, a multi-nation multi private academy and stuff like that, if I want to go into 
those kind of uh, career options then definitely such course would be very very useful for me in the, you know getting into this uh, sports management and uh, because that is also a big thing in india i forgot to mention earlier but a lot of private uh, sport companies are emerging in india which are which are catering to the needs of multi sports uh, programs in terms of rehab in terms of uh, strength and conditioning in terms of management so big big uh, corporate houses they know they're using the corporate social responsibility funds to set up such houses which again jo opens up a lot a lot of these uh, opportunities for those who do sports management but yeah if i'm looking to uh, switch my career a little bit into more into into a more entrepreneur kind of a thing then this would be very useful fantastic right next one is to catherine now uh, what would be my approach to streamline into sports marketing uh, i have a masters degree and 3 years experience in a sport tech company promoting sports infrastructure and fitness well i think the first step is to decide if i usually just ask students you know what what is your end goal in getting this degree is it you know you want to advance where you are right now in your career you want to change careers it sounds like this person if you already have a master's degree it's obviously okay to still apply for another master's degree there's plenty of people out there with double degrees um but uh it looks like they're in a sport tech company so promoting sports infrastructure and fitness so if you're looking to advance your knowledge in that area if you kind of sometimes i think people get stuck in their career and they're just looking for something to kind of get them out of it it's almost like a, a bit of a writer's block and look at let's see you know when you come to new zealand a you're you're out of your the element that you're most comfortable in and whenever you have that adversity um you have an opportunity to grow and i remember when i first left the us and went to switzerland i only knew a few bad words in swiss german and <laughs> <laughs> had to l- learn the language when i got there and and i i, I knew like my aim was actually to struggle because i knew when there's struggle there's a lot of learning and that's exactly what happens so i would say absolutely apply for it if you're looking to just open expand your mind into into areas that you never thought were possible especially if you've never really learned and um and took classes in another country you're going to be surprised what you can learn from your classmates as well as from the teachers and a new culture you'll just be it'll just blow your mind well, thanks Catherine uh, and I can see Annie has moved into a brighter room now and so and somebody said let there be light so <laughs> all right uh, so this one's to you Annie <laughs> Uh, can someone who uh, who has completed their level 7 graduate diploma in sports management directly apply for the masters or do they need to do a level 8 first this is from neil disuza um no if you meet the um if you have got b average in your um grade dip you can gain direct entry into the masters the postgraduate diploma essentially is the first two semester of the master studies so the only dif- the difference is the academic background like ac- the requirement from your academic relevance and also um your academic grades the in terms of the um you often in the in the class we might have students coming from p- postgraduate diploma or students coming from masters depending on their career aspiration what they want to do um in their in the next step of career some students might be doing their research masters year one of research masters some of them might be doing um try to give it a go do one semester of postgraduate um certificate so it it's um it's it's a bit it, it it's case by case depending on what you want to achieve from your life sometimes it's about what you have achieved in your life and whether you can meet the academic grades but also it also depends for some students it's about can i afford it because sometimes they you can get entry into the masters but you mean or the and the pgd at the same time but um the 42750 for the total program could be a bit out of your budget so some students do opt for just a two semester as an interim solution which is totally fine because um learn you never stop learning and sometimes um different um channels will achieve the same level of outcome all right great answer and some life philosophy as well there and uh, moving on now uh, 
<laughs> this one's for you, Mary. And this is, uh, in case I opt for November intake and complete the course in one year, how many years of post study work visa mm -hmm. am I eligible for? So if you're, if you're obviously, I think you're talking about the masters. Masters yeah. will give you respect or when you start, will give you a three years post study work visa. Only if you're doing a program lesser than level eight is when you're, there will be an alteration in terms of the number of years you're eligible for. But anybody studying a program of level eight and above, you will be eligible for three years. That means the masters will give you three years, no matter when you start. All right. This is to break it up a little bit and bring back Sridhar into the conversation and probably not directly relevant to what we're discussing, but this one is for you. Sridhar, it says, I'm a cricket player in Hyderabad. How can I reach a greater position, sir? <laughs> <laughs> can you come again? <laughs> I'm a cricket player in Hyderabad. How can I reach a greater position? Uh, I, I maybe move from third slip to first slip. That's a greater <laughs> position. <laughs> All right, I, I, I just want to break it up a little bit there. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, this one is to both Annie and to uh, Catherine after the course. Uh, are there any placement uh, opportunities from the university? Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get you one. Um, yeah, well, first, first of all, I should mention, so in our undergraduate degree, we have an internship placement, which is kind of part of the degree itself. In the master's degree, we don't officially have an internship placement, but I will get you one. So just come see me. I mean, I'm advising the master's students anyway. And we, we basically have a cup of coffee and talk about where you want to go, what you're good at, what, what gets you up in the morning. Is it cricket? Is it um, community sport? Uh, what is it? And I'll find you work because that's one thing that I really noticed in New Zealand. Um, when you're applying for jobs, they go right to that volunteer section on your CV and they see who you've, who you've volunteered for. And then they'll say, oh, you worked for Canterbury Cricket. Oh, you must know um, such and such person. Oh, let me ring him. And so they'll look at your CV, they'll ring three people and they'll know just like that, that you're really good or not. <laughs> and so without even calling you back, they already know, yeah, this is the guy we want. So, um, but we have networking, we have about three times a year. Um, plus we have a sports forum we host at the university and we invite everyone from the sector to come in. I have an email list now with over 400 names of people in the region and throughout New Zealand. And they come and our students present some of their research, um, undergrads and postgraduates. And that's just a place afterwards, we just have a big, huge networking session and then we have morning coffees as well with people from the sector. So we invite students to come to that. And then usually I'll just say, hey, this is Sri Jith, And this is Mark from Canterbury Cricket. Let's have you guys talk. He's looking for this and this. And then I just play matchmaker. And next thing you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to volunteer for him this weekend. And then a few weeks later, you find out he's volunteering full time and ends up with a job. So. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in New Zealand. I will say the volunteering thing is absolutely part of the game. So yeah, we're happy to get you get you out there. In fact, I've been emailing. I have the three Indian students that I talk to the most um, on my email list. When I when people were emailing asking for help, I just send it out to them. They're like, oh, thanks, thanks, Catherine. Um, we ended up working with them. So it's quite a cool relationship I have with them actually. <laughs> Talk about outsourcing there, Catherine. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, just because the students are from India, that doesn't really outsource it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right, uh, jokes apart. This one's for Sridhar. What stands out to you about New Zealand as a country, Sridhar, and how does it compare with other countries you have been to? Look, as, as the coach of the Indian team, I've traveled to quite a few countries across Europe mm -hmm. and across all the five continents, but uh, New Zealand is one place which really stands out for me, to be very honest, because I think the number one thing is the friendliness of the people out in New Zealand, the, the, the working culture, and like Catherine mentioned earlier, the work-life balance, and uh, I'm not even talking about the weather, I mean, the weather is awesome, As someone who comes from, I just I fall in love with the weather in New Zealand. This, I've been there only in the summers, I've been there in the winters, and I'm sure it's good in the winters too. So, yeah. <laughs> 
these are the things the friendliness of the people the work life balance the the the, the weather and uh, just the way the country is it's, i mean it's so much so much better than most of the other countries i have traveled to and uh, it is just the way the people treat you the way just they, they respond to you is awesome the coffee of course <laughs> and the wine don't forget the wine <laughs> the people of me yeah fit all great absolutely right yeah thanks for that <laughs> I, i i treated uh, shrida to a lot of lovely pinogri when we were in christ church for the test match so yeah yeah i just right. want to i yeah, just yeah, want to say then. that um we do actually teach a uh, um, wine making qualification so we have a bachelor of horticulture or enology oh, graduate come from my horticulture don't, don't <laughs> so even to catch session I'm, no i just got in case he wants to change a uh, career if, if he wants to look at life outside sports recreate um you know sports <laughs> there is another opportunity for you <laughs> all right thanks for the little plug about your course in enology there uh, and he, okay here's a nice one this is from a, a young person and he says yes. i'm currently in the 11th grade and i'm studying the international baccalaureate diploma i would like to know if i should start my sports management course as an undergraduate student or as a graduate you're asking me yeah, asking i think that Catherine great. can take that yeah yeah. Or, or yeah. yeah yeah that's i would say it just depends if do you want to just think of a funnel you know if you wanted to start big and narrow it down you know you could start with a business or commerce degree but i will give you some advice on the fact that um our degree is focused on people because sports is about relationships where if you take like a commerce or a business degree they're going to be focused on profit so uh if you want to learn about how to how to network with people how to shake a hand in my 100 level classes we we practice shaking hands and how to write an email professionally and using capital letters and it, it sounds ridiculous but people are texting emails and you get this email with a lowercase i and you think oh my gosh don't send that to your the person you want to get a job with you want to look good so i'm teaching the students how to how to how to look good and so if you want to learn about people and relationships then i would just take the sport management off i would start off with the undergraduate and move into that if you know for sure now if you're not sure you think sports might be a pathway but you're also into into business and and you're you're keen to you know have profits drive everything you do then maybe more of like commerce or business but i would I would argue that with climate change I think even covid I would just argue things are changing and I yeah. think we're we're looking at a new world uh fingers crossed that it's not going to be about greed I think it's people are changing and so I would argue you know the new economy is going to be focused on human capital and and looking at people and how how people stay well and it's real obvious during this time in new zealand people are outside they're on their bikes they're running they're walking they're with their families they're with the things that are the most important um and it, it's not about money i mean i mean you obviously you need money to survive but you look at trump and it just makes me sick every night i can't sleep sometimes because i just think my family's back there <laughs> and all they're focused on is making profits which is one way to do it but i don't necessarily think it's the way forward so i would argue that person should take the sport management undergrad and the and the masters and really get a firm you know imagine if you're the professional in the area and you show up for a job interview and you've had that much knowledge behind you plus whatever internships and practical experience we set you up with you're going to be loaded to get the job <laughs> so uh versus someone who's kind of come from more of a mixture they might not understand the sports you know in the US a lot of a lot of business transactions happen on a golf course in New Zealand a lot of business transactions happen at the cafe over or the coffee pub. or the pub or the yeah. pub yeah <laughs> so you know you have to understand that that's part of it um and if i think if you come from some other degrees you might not get that so yeah 
Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Mary, you can take this one. What are the English requirements for this course to be able to get into this? The uh, master's level programs require you to have a 6.5 IELTS with no band less than six. Am I right, Annie? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's got to be academic. And it has to be academic in IELTS or equivalent uh, in PTE and TOEFL. Excellent. Well, uh, we are almost to the end of our session. We've done an hour long session and I will invite our panelists, uh, starting with uh, Sridhar, to do some closing comments. Uh, and I will, of course, wind it up eventually. Yeah. First of all, uh, as much as I, as, as I spoke on this, it was very informative for me as well. And I thank all the panelists from our own, Mary, Catherine and Annie, to, to enlighten, enlighten me in, in various fields. and. Uh, Going back after this uh, chat, somebody who knows a little more, more about sports management courses and New Zealand. So, yeah. And I would strongly recommend for all those uh, Indian students who are on this webinar, who, who are listening to me, I would strongly recommend you, if you have an opportunity, if you can get a scholarship, go to New Zealand, study there. And uh, it's a beautiful country to be in. And I'm sure the course at the Lincoln University is going to really, really benefit you in your career, whether you pursue it in New Zealand or when you want to come back to India, that's up to you. But I would really, really recommend all those whether they are migrating to New Zealand or whether they're going on a study visa, go to New Zealand and it's a beautiful country to be in. Thank you, Sridhar. Really appreciate your endorsement of our beautiful country and Lincoln and this course. Uh, Catherine, over to you and your closing comments, please. Oh, just to say thanks everyone for coming and listening. And um, I really look forward to having more students from India. I think from my experience, everyone's been so happy and lovely. Um, and I think you can really open up uh, quite a bit more doors to your profession. And it could be in New Zealand, it could be back in India or elsewhere, but you don't really know until you try. So um, I'd be happy to, to answer any emails or if you wanna do a, a Skype session one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be happy to answer any questions that students might come up with. But um, if you're, have a sleep on it, um, a few sleeps, but if you just feel like you're pulled and you're compelled, you'll end up in New Zealand. So um, I look forward to meeting you. And uh, I, mean, I, would, I would ask, I wonder if we can, you're able to explain the photo that's behind you. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Before yeah. we go, All because right, they guys, might be like, "What is that?" Go. They might be like, "What is that?" Because they can't see the whole picture. And, oh, um, that's because yeah. I've got a light there, which is on. Yeah. That's called the New Zealand Hongi, the formal greeting. Uh, the Maori greeting in New Zealand is called the Hongi, where we touch uh, the nose to each other. And uh, I actually did uh, two courses in Maori, so I, I can uh, actually korero in Maori. Uh, which oh, is big wow. in Maori. Yeah, I can do a full on mihi and stuff. And I keep surprising the odd person every time with my korero in Maori in te reo. Yeah. Quality. I think the, <laughs> the coolest thing about that is that um, when you touch the nose with another person, you're actually breathing the same air. Absolutely. That's the and thing. So that's, the, so that's the real. Is yeah. that, in that moment, you're both uh, taking the same uh, uh, that sp spirit of life. Uh, that's that, that the change now of post COVID 19. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Distancing, yes, of course. So, so we are still doing the hongi, but two meters apart. <laughs> With a mask. Hey, hey Catherine, thank you for your closing comments and love the accent, by the way. It's, it's oh, great thank you. to listen to an American accent here in New Zealand. So I look yeah. forward to meeting in person. Annie, over to you and your closing comments. Thank you very much, Arun and the team and our wonderful cricket um extra <laughs> um team from india thank you go india cricket <laughs> and i hope you can oh i hope you can be the first country that start playing cricket um amongst the crisis um and thank you for everybody for participating and just please stay safe and um stay positive Go India team cricket. <laughs> and also don't forget to eat some nasi biryani for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Annie. And uh, yeah. uh, closing yeah. comments from you, Mary? Uh, thank you all for attending uh, this webinar. Thank you, Lincoln University. Thank you, Catherine, Annie. We've had an amazing working relationship 
with Lincoln University for various programs. And we are very, very happy to also promote this particular program. And we are a team of uh, experienced licensed immigration advisors here. We're five of us and we're based out of Hamilton, not very far from Christchurch, just about three hours away by flight, but we're here to support all those who are interested and keen. Uh, Arun will share more details and the team also will share details as to how to connect with us. We'll be happy to help any of you interested to study this program. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mary. And well, final words from me. Thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us today. Big thank you to Sridhar, uh, you know, uh, for coming and presenting his views on New Zealand and sports management and about his own experiences. Catherine, lovely insights from you. Annie, great as always. Thanks, Mary. And this is all recorded, and it's going to be uh, this particular session for yeah. those of you who missed out. It's going to be put up, put up on our uh, ajvglobal.com website and Facebook page as well as on YouTube. And uh, so do uh, uh, tune in and uh, share it with your family and friends. There are quite a few questions which have remained unanswered. We didn't want to stretch it way beyond an hour's time. Uh, so what we will do is uh, our yeah. team uh, in yeah. India and in New Zealand will come back and uh, talk to you again uh, individually. But uh, once again, uh, big uh, kia ora from New Zealand. Thank you for being here. And till the next time, this is goodbye from Hamilton, Hyderabad, and Christchurch, Lincoln. All right, for Marie, which is good night and morning.